Hi guys, today we're going to have a look at parallel circuits and how to do problem solving on these specific circuits. Um, I think the first thing that we need to understand and we need to know and how to use it is the two laws. All right, where do I use uh, Kirchhoff's current law, which is the first one, and where do I use Kirchhoff's voltage law? Um, I'm going to start with Kirchhoff's voltage law because that is not the one that we're going to use in this specific circuit. Uh, Kirchhoff's voltage law says that the sum of the voltage drops is going to be equals to applied to the applied voltage in a closed circuit. Now, that is not the law that we're going to use here. The law that we're going to use here is Kirchhoff's current law. And the reason for that is because in this specific circuit, as we can see, we're going to have currents that is splitting. So meaning that there I have a total current. I have I1, I2, and I3, which I can see is splitting in different branches. And Kirchhoff's current law says that current entering a point is going to be the same when that current leaves that point. So which means if this current splits from my I total into the branches, it's going to be the same when it comes to the other side which means when it gets to this point here, it's going to be my total current again. And that is what Kirchhoff's uh, current law says. Also, one thing that we need to understand, in this circuit, we no, don't need to calculate any voltage drops. My voltage drop over R1, R2, and R3 in this specific circuit is going to be my, voltage, my total voltage. That is going to be my voltage drop over all of these resistors. Right. Now, the first thing that you need to do when you start solving this specific circuit is uh, draw the pyramid. The thing of the pyramid is you can derive your formulas from the pyramid, so you don't need to memorize your, 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 your formulas when you are in a test or in exams. So, draw the pyramid. There I have my pyramid, and now I can derive my formulas from the pyramid. I can um, get the voltage formula, current, and resistance formula. And I'm going to show you how you need to do that. Let's say, for instance, you want to calculate a voltage. My voltage, which I have here, is going to be equal to this current times this resistance here. So I'm going to say that V is equal to I times R. <clears throat> Excuse me. The next thing is we're going to calculate the resistance. So if I need my resistance, it's going to be my voltage divided by my current. So R is equal to a voltage divided by my current. And then to calculate my current, it's going to be I is going to be equal to my voltage divided by my resistance. My voltage divided by my resistance. And those are the three formulas that you will be needing to do calculations here. <clears throat> now, the next thing that you need to do, and or before we go there, the next thing that you need to understand is the fact that to calculate the total resistance in these circuits are maybe one of the most important things. Because... For if you have your total resistance, you will need to calculate your total current. So the total resistance must be correctly calculated. Otherwise, your total current, which you're going to calculate here, is going to be incorrect because you're going to use it in this specific formula. Right. Now, because we have three resistors in parallel here, sorry, parallel there, I'm going to use the formula which says that and this is the original one. R total is equals to R1 times R2 over R1 plus R2. So there I have my formula which I'm going to use to do um, the total resistance. Now, this one I'm going to use last, RT. What I'm going to do first is, because I have three resistors and in parallel, I'm going to do the first two first. I'm going to use R3 and I'm going to do R2 
I'm going to put them together and I'm going to calculate what is the resistance for these two resistors in parallel there. I'm going to get one resistor. Right. So the formula will look like this. I'm going to say R parallel. Those two lines that I have there are showing me that I'm actually calculating two resistors in parallel. The first two I'm going to calculate, as I've said, is R3 and R2. So that is going to be equals to R3 times R2 over R3 plus R2. So from this formula, I'm getting that these two resistors are now going to, uh, going to become one resistor. And I'm going to show you in a simple sketch, which I'm going to draw here. I'm going to redraw this circuit now. And this is also what I want you to do. After you've done this, calculated, or, yeah, calculated two resistors in, in parallel, and you have three or more resistors there, redraw the circuit so that you can see as you go along what are you actually doing. So there I have, I have my V total, I have my I total, um, I have R parallel now, which is in actual fact R3 and R2 combined, and then I have R1. Alright, so now because this is my last two resistors left in my circuit, I'm now going to use this formula which says R total. Alright, but obviously this will change in the sense of these two resistors that I have here. So now I'm going to say that R total in actual fact is R parallel times R1 over R parallel plus R1. And there I have calculated my total resistors in this whole circuit. Next, we're going to calculate my total current. So this total current I'm now going to calculate. Remember, the total resistance is now calculated correctly. So I can use my uh, total voltage and my total resistance and calculate what is my total current here. And remember, I have my formulas there. So I must choose which formula I'm going to use. I'm going to use this one. The only thing is, this will become I total, V total, and R total. So now I can say that I total in actual fact is equals to my total voltage divided by my total resistance, which I have just calculated. And there I have my total current in the circuit. Next that we're going to calculate and this is a, a question which they ask you in the exams. They, and they always try to trick you by giving you more than one mark for this specific question, whereby they ask you, calculate the total or calculate the voltage drop over, let's say for instance, R1 or R2 or R3. They want you to do a calculation, but you actually don't need to do the calculation. What you need to know now is, According to Kirchhoff's current law, it says that the volt, total voltage in my circuit, if I have only parallel, a parallel circuit, my total voltage will be the voltage drop over all of these resistors. So in actual fact, you can just write it like this by saying my V total in this circuit is actually V1, which is equals to V2, which is equals to V3. And you can write the value afterwards there by saying, and let's make an example. Let's say this is 9 volt. And then you can just write there, 9 volt. And you're going to get 1 to 2 marks for just writing that. Even if you just write down the voltage, you will get 1 mark to 2 marks. All right. It's a trick question. And they just want you to want to know, do you understand uh, the actual uh, law? Right. The next thing that we're going to calculate now is calculate my currents in the circuit. And that is current I1, I2, and I3. Again, we're going to make use of this formula here because we want the current. So this I will become I1, I2, or I3, depending on which current you are calculating. My voltage, which I have here in the formula, this one will become 
V total, remember, because it's the only voltage we have in the circuit. And then the R will become R1, R2 or R3, depending on which resistor you have uh, in that branch. Right, so when we calculate I1, I1 will be V total divided by R1. And that is the current flowing through this branch here. The next one is calculating I2. I2 is equals to also V total divided by R2. And then the last one is I3 is equals to V total divided by R3. And there I have my three currents. Now, the other thing that you can also do is, when you have calculated these two currents, you have established what is the current flowing through those branches. You can actually use Kirchhoff's current law and calculate the third one. And I'm going to show you now how you do that. It is going to be I total is equals to I1 plus I2 plus I3, which means, what is the, the current that I'm looking for? I'm looking for I3, which means I need to make I3 the subject of the formula. So I3 is going to be equals to I total minus the sum of I1 plus I2. And then you can calculate I3 or the last current by using Kirchhoff's current law. Right. So in actual fact, that is how you will solve a parallel circuit like this. First and foremost, understand the law. Next, when you start solving the, 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 the problem, draw your pyramid, draw your... Um, or write down your formulas from that pyramid and then start calculating by uh, calculating your total resistance, total current, your currents through the branches. Obviously, you will be asked, they will ask you uh, what to calculate first. But as I've said, for, for, for this circuits, the total resistance to know that is very, very important. Thank you very much and thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel for more of these types of videos.